Hello, my name is Tony Tracy. I'm the Managing Director of Pitch Factory, and we're a marketing and communication consultancy. And I'm here at Dam Europe, uh, organised by Henry Stewart. And it's been a very interesting conference. We've had lots of um, presentations around what companies are trying to achieve with Dam and some of the technology. But we thought that it would be quite interesting to get behind that, to actually talk to some of the people who really make Dam happen. So it's my pleasure to meet uh, Patrick Lennon. He's Content Coordinator at Tourism Island. How do you do? Hello, Tony. So I thought it'd be great to start perhaps with just a little bit of background about your job and what you do and, and also what the organisation does. Right, well, Tourism Ireland is the marketing body for uh, the island of Ireland and our main focus is on international marketing. So any form of marketing at all that takes place outside of the island of Ireland is our responsibility. So we have 20 odd offices around the world and other agents working on our behalf and our mission is to ensure that Ireland is presented as a potential place for people to come on holidays. And how do you get over the problem that sometimes the sun shines in Ireland? We don't talk as much about the weather, but we do mention, in, particularly on our website and some of our communications, that um, it's worthwhile bringing an umbrella, perhaps, or sometimes a jumper, uh, because you can get all seasons in the one day in Ireland. But uh, generally speaking, people don't come to Ireland for the weather, but they do come for lots of other things, the culture, the crack, the landscapes, and um, just meeting the Irish people and, and interacting with them. Now, your job's quite interesting in that you are responsible for DAM, but you also have a responsible for you know, commissioning content and also for actually the operational side of marketing too, don't you? Yes, to a certain extent. Um, part of my job was involved in the what we would call the complementary and supplementary uh, creation and commissioning curation of um, assets. Right uh, now, we do have a large advertising agency who produce the the large scale advertising pieces that we use, whether that's uh, right across all our channels. But uh, we also have to uh, complement those with additional assets that. Uh, our partners around the world can use as well. So some of our main advertising assets may be limited in terms of the usage, so we tend to try and create additional assets that, uh, are, as I said, our partners, tour operators, our, um, the airlines that fly into Ireland, and uh, a lot of the media around the world as well, uh, whether it be news media or even in form of film, documentary, etc. Anything that they require, we will try and provide because they do a certain amount of marketing on our behalf. They feature the island of Ireland and we're happy for them to use a lot of the material that we generate. So you have an interesting job in that you have a responsibility for commissioning work as well as for the asset management side of things, plus also some of the, you know, the actual use of the, the marketing or creation of the marketing. Yes, um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a joined up role very much. Um, and uh, although we have a, a range of assets that are main advertising, um, publishing organization have created for us. We also have to provide some supplementary and complementary assets to those because there are certain limits on the main advertising pieces that they can use so we always provide additional assets for them to to use in their marketing or in co-op or co-branded marketing opportunities that may come along. Um, those assets are uh, not just for the uh, island of Ireland in terms of tourism Ireland assets, but we also pull in assets from tourism Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland as well. Those are the organisations who are responsible for the development of the tourism product. And at the moment we're creating a dam system that allows for a one point of access to all the marketing assets that could be used for promoting tourism to the island of Ireland. What would you say are the, are the sort of key differences between the old system or the asset bank you had before and, and what you're creating at the moment? The key differences would be um, over this last number of years we have found that we're using a video as part of our marketing mix um, and those are long form videos, short form videos and snippet videos as well that we use across social media. So we found that uh, increasingly we needed a platform that was more native uh, in terms of the video formats and which made it easier for us to, to work with video and also to distribute it in, in the formats that we need to. In terms of your career, how, how long have you been working with asset management systems? Well, um, I've developed the first 
database, what you would call for a photographer back in 1998, uh, a long time ago, along with a colleague. Um, and um, since then, um, I've been either in a position where I'm trying to uh, justify the development of dam systems or have been directly involved in procuring dam systems for our organisations. Now, I'm quite interested to ask you about the commissioning side of things. Uh, you work with a load of different markets all over the world. What sort of issues do you face commissioning work? Well, we try as much as possible uh, as an organisation, because we're limited in terms of the budgets that we have, to uh, look at the wider use case for any particular assets that we're commissioning. So uh, we try and, and create assets that are multi-market in focus, but there are some limitations okay, in that. Um, one of the uh, iconic images of Ireland is the pint of Guinness, okay, and right across the world. But in certain markets, there are limitations on the how alcohol is seen in any imagery or video. So we have to sometimes um, create two versions of a video or, or an image uh, so that it can be used in multiple markets. So what kind of example would that be where you, you're not allowed to show the drink at all or that you, you can show it but in only in certain cases? Yes, we can show the, um, uh, the, the drink on, on, on a table, for example. We can show it in the background, for example, in a bar or restaurant situation, but we can't actually show anyone drinking or partaking of alcohol. Okay. All right. Um, uh, and that, that applies because alcohol isn't, is, uh, as a product isn't used in some way for religious purposes. In other, other realms, it's to do with the advertising and promotion of, of alcohol. So how do you train the users around these different differences for assets use in each market? Well, it's very much the users who come to us and ask for the assets to be de derived or directed in, in a particular way. Okay. So, um, but when we actually create the assets, we make sure that they're tagged within the metadata or our taxonomy that we adopt so that uh, the end user can then find those assets specific to their needs. Now, I'm quite interested in, in your users because, um, you know, you've listened to the conference, there's a lot of questions around how users adopt new technology and, and their responsiveness to things and so on. Have you found um, any differences between your user community, both, both the sort of internal users and the external users, if you like, of, of your systems? I think the external users, right, that we have, and there are... Uh, agencies, uh, news agencies, media, uh, tour wrappers all over the world, um, they look upon the dance system as a, as a great resource. It's, some, it's a one-stop shop for what they need to help them in creating whatever their final um, asset for campaigns or whatever it is. Um, the main um, internal user base are those who challenge us all the time to find uh, new ways or improvements in what we're doing within the dance system. Have they, been, have they been as welcoming, as easy adopters, if you like, as, as the externals, or do you think they've found it a bit more challenging? I think they find it a little bit more challenging. Um, um, Time-wise, right, uh, because we're limited in resources and time and all that, um, our internal user base want to find exactly what they want as quickly as possible. And sometimes they don't always use the full features of the system that we have to interrogate it in order to find um, a range of, of options, okay? So um, it's trying to meet expectations, but at the same time trying to ensure that the technology reaches out to all the user base that we have. Right. I was going to ask you in terms of the kind of the, the key challenges that you have at the moment then. You're moving to a new system, so there's a migration challenge I imagine, and you're trying to keep pace with everything. I, I guess there's lots of things happening. Um, what, what would you say your key challenges are? Well, uh, the initial challenge that we have is in terms of onboarding uh, internal staff initially on the new system and making sure that the functionality and services provided by the new developer meet the expectations of the procurement program that we had put in place. Um, there are lots of different uh, elements to the various services and functionality that our new developer can provide, but we're looking to do it in stages. We're looking to build the core dam, first of all, in the first stage, and then look at the interactions with our other um, uh, communication stacks and, and hubs that we have. And then in, uh, in the third stage, then we're looking at other uh, areas that we can develop in terms of media portals, brand portals, and um, other services that may benefit us in the long term. So how long do you think the entire implementation process <coughs> will take? I would suggest it's going to take the best part of six months to do the initial onboarding of internal and also external, external users. 
and then probably another year to build in the other services and functionality that we want to build. I was, I was struck by the fact, obviously, that you're a, a government-funded um, organisation, aren't you? And I, I imagine that presents certain challenges or, or certain sort of peculiarities by comparison to the corporate world other people may be used to. What, what sort of things are different for you? Well, uh, one of the main differences is that uh, in terms of our contractual arrangements with uh, any third-party suppliers that we have, we have to follow very uh, interesting procurement guidelines, shall we say, and uh, we have a limited contractual period okay, with any third party. But there, that has good elements of it and uh, bad elements of it. The good element is that it gives you a chance to review what you're currently uh, using and how you're going to look to the future in terms of buying additional services. Uh, the bad element is, um, it's very simply, is that it adds more work onto an already limited range of resources that you have in people and, and time. Well, I've just got one final question. I suppose it's, um, it's a difficult one for anyone would be. Which of, of the parts of your job are, do you think you know, most satisfying, the most bit, you, know, you enjoy the most, I suppose, <coughs> um, and why? Well, um, I'm a keen amateur photographer, right? So I love the creative process in terms of the commissioning and getting involved in that. Um, and a lot of my, my own actual images are up on our current dam system. Um, but I also enjoy the technology uh, in being able to present those fantastic images and pieces of video to the world, right, literally, uh, because a, a lot of our users are right across the whole world. So um, being able to take a, uh, an image uh, and then know that that image has been used right across the world by different people in different media makes my whole job very satisfying. Well, that's brilliant. Listen, thank you very much for your time, Patrick, and thank you for watching. Thank you.